All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. 500 here, Mr. Delgado. We're going to be doing some story problems here today. And what I'm going to be focusing on is I'm going to be focusing on some combinations and some permutations. All right, so let's go ahead and check this bad boy out. All right, so here's the deal. Combinations, combinations are a type of problem. And we're going to be looking at some of them right now. Combinations are the problems where order doesn't matter. For example, for example, um, let's say I'm gonna pick a group of students from a class of 16 I'm gonna pick groups of four okay so I'm gonna pick my first group of students and it doesn't matter who I pick to be first second third or fourth that group of students is gonna be a combination the order doesn't matter okay there's a certain formula that comes with the territory when you do a com combination but then we got ourselves what they call a permutation a permutation a certain way a permutation works is like let's say um, you got a telephone number all right, you got seven numbers to pick in the telephone number. And see, the thing is, it matters which numbers are in the telephone number, okay? But not only that, it also matters in what order they appear. So order matters with a permutation, okay? So I can't just have six sevens and a five because it could just be five, seven, 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 or it could be seven, five, seven, 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 seven. And see, the thing is, that order changes the phone number here, okay? And see, this is the type of problems we're gonna be looking at today, okay? Combination permutations, okay? So let's see what we got. Number 60, okay? And then you read it. I'm reading it too. We're picking seven numbers. We got a group of 10. We're gonna calculate the seven digit numbers that can form if repetition is not allowed. Not allowed being the key term here. All right, so here's the deal. Like if I got 10 numbers here, like I'll go ahead and write some numbers down. Zero, one, two, and so forth okay I'm writing these numbers down and so hopefully you're gonna get the point here when I pick a first number here let's say I pick I don't know let's say I pick four okay my first number is gonna be four all right so here now my second number I'm gonna pick well I don't have a total of ten choices anymore I'm only gonna have nine choices okay and then my next one I'm only gonna have eight choices the next one I'm only gonna have seven and so forth so when you look at this type of problem, you got this decreasing number that's going to be basically multiplied. We're going to be using a tool that we might have seen before, and that tool is the factorial symbol. Now, you might not know where the factorial symbol is, but I'm going to show it to you right now. It's actually right next to this right here, the sigma button right here, the summation tool factorial is blue right underneath it, okay? We're going to be using factorial. We're going to be using factorial for these problems here, okay? So let's go ahead and check this out. Let's go ahead and check this out. In this particular problem, we got ourselves 10. We got ourselves 10 different numbers we could pick from. Okay, so the first time we're doing this, we got 10. Then we're going to multiply by 9. Then we're going to multiply by 8 because each time we pick a number, that number is not going to be put back because in repetition is not allowed. So we got 10, 9, 8, 7. That's four numbers chosen. Then this is the fifth number right here. And this is the sixth number right here. And this is the seventh number right here. Okay, so if you could think of it that way, well, that's good. You got the concept down, but there's a little formula we got for permutations when the orders do matter. So here's the formula just in case. We got ourselves n, which is the total number of elements in the set, how many we're going to be able to pick from, and then the denominator is going to be n minus r. r representing how many choices we're going to make here factorial okay so what happens here is that we're gonna have the 10 numbers at the top is our numerator okay right because 10 factorial but then we're gonna have 10 minus 7 so our denominator is gonna be 3 factorial now I didn't put it up here but we're essentially gonna have 3 times 2 times 1 is the numerator here also included but what happens when we have that 3 factorial is we're gonna have 3 times 2 times 1 is the denominator and if you see simplification, well, guess what? These are going to cancel each other out. So our initial idea of 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 works. It ends up being the exact same thing here. But you could use a formula or you could physically think about it. You could think about what's going on here. So I'm going to hit a 10 factorial. Then I'm going to hit 3 factorial. Hit divide. Connect them. Boom. 6.05 times 10 to the fifth, right? Heroom. You got to make sure you take a look at this because this is an integer problem. You cannot write scientific notation in this type of problem. If anything, you got to hit yellow show and write the exact integer you see there. So I see 604, 800. Six, 
604,800. So you better write all that stuff down. If you don't write it down, you get it wrong. So 6,000, no, 600,000, 604,000, sorry, I apologize, 800. And now we got ourselves a correct answer for this permutation, okay? Now the next problem right here does involve, you know, combinations, but it, it, I mean, we're, we're making an arrangement, but here, you, here in this problem, it, it is another permutation here because it does matter you know, I mean, look, you get 25 C's on a test. It doesn't matter what order you put the C's. But let's say a test has 24 C's and one A. Is the A first? Is the A second? Is the A third? I mean, this this does matter, and it changes things. It changes things. That's why this is a permutation problem. So let's go ahead and take a look. We got four different choices. Something's happening here, though. In this problem, we could repeat the choices. So we're not gonna have to have decreasing elements here. We're not gonna be doing that. We're not gonna be doing that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have four choices each time for these questions. And since we have 25 total questions, we're gonna end up making these four choices a total of 25 times. And that doesn't mean four times 25. It means four to the 25th power. Simple as that. It's as simple as that. Now in this problem, we don't see an integer. We just write 1.13 times 10 to the 15th okay hey don't be shy if you got to pause the video so you could read the question okay don't be shy pause it and then we'll talk about it for example we got number 72 next we got 72 well julie julie we got julie right here so we got a combination lock combination now you read the word combination and you think order does matter it sure does matter it is a permutation okay so the dial has 30 numbers on it we got a total of 30 choices we're gonna pick three choices order does matter remember it says cannot be repeated we can't have the same number more than once so this is n factorial over n minus r factorial here okay so in this problem here we got a total of 30 choices and we're going to go ahead and put that 30 minus 3 27 factorial and that's it look you could think of it this way i mean if you were able to process it 30 times 29 times 28 well, power to you, power to you, you're going to get this problem correctly. But really, the formula is the way to go. Well, both ways are the way to go. 30 factorial, 27 factorial, we hit the divide, we connect it. Remember, it's an integer problem, so you better not put 2.44 times 10 to the fourth. You better put 24,360. 24,360, and we call, it, we call it a day. Integer problems matter, okay? How many times have I seen kids get stuff wrong? Because they're not following the integer rules. Tons of times, tons of times, that's why it matters. So now we got ourselves an arrangement of letters, okay? We got ourselves seven consonants, and we're only picking three of them. And then we also got four vowels, and we're only picking two of them. This is gonna be a hybrid. We're gonna be putting these different choices together. So as you can see, we're gonna be using our permutation formula, because order does matter again. But we're not just gonna use it once, we're gonna use it twice. Okay, so you gotta make sure that you do know how to read the problems and understand them. So we got seven consonants, and then it's gonna be only three choices, so it's seven minus three. I'm waiting. I'm just messing with you. I know it's four, and hopefully you know it's four. But we're gonna get that one, and we're gonna put it together with the vowels. We got four vowels total, and then we're only check checking two. We're only selecting two, so we got four minus two makes two factorial. We're gonna have both of these answers, and we're gonna multiply them, and that's it. I mean, really, it's not a hard problem. We're gonna go ahead and put seven factorial. We're gonna go ahead and put four factorial, divide. We got four factorial, two factorial, divide. Hit multiply to connect them. This is an integer problem. So we're gonna go ahead and put 2,520, and we call it a day. All right, let's check out another problem, okay? We're gonna make some outfits here. We're gonna be matching or not, don't matter if they match or not. You know, Mr. Delgado, he always matches. You know, he tries to match, but it don't all matter here. You could wear whatever the heck you want in this problem. We got seven choices for the pants. We got 10 choices for the shirts. We got five choices for the shoes. Dude, this problem is as easy as that. We got seven choices for the first selection. We got 10 choices for the second selection, which is the shirt. And then we got five choices for the pairs of shoes. So we're just gonna do seven times 10 times five and that's it it's an integer problem we hit yellow show and that's it 350 different possibilities different outcomes that could happen here okay so let's check out our next one here we got ourselves texas license plates okay so they're formed by three letters 
A through Z. A through Z, that means all 26 letters could be chosen, but we're only picking three. And then we got ourselves four numbers, zero to nine. Now some people can get this wrong because they think it's only nine numbers, but it's not because zero counts too. There's 10 numbers here, but we're only picking four. So we gotta calculate the number of plates that can be made if repetition is allowed. Now this one's a little different. Repetition is allowed. So in this problem here, we're gonna go ahead and select how many? Out of those, uh, how many here? How many here? Oh, okay, okay, I thought you didn't read it, but yeah, I read it here. It's gonna be 26, but we're not just gonna do it once. We're gonna do it, not twice, but we're gonna do it three times because we are selecting three letters. So it's 26 to the third power. We're gonna multiply it by, well, we got 10 different numbers and we're gonna select four of them and not, and we could repeat them. That's why we're just gonna go ahead and do that. It's 10 times four to the 10 to the fourth power. And we're gonna hit those together and multiply it. So 26 enter, three y to the x. Then we got ourselves 10 enter, four y to the x. Hit multiply to connect them. It's not an integer problem, so we call it. It's 1.76 times 10 to the eighth. And that's it. That's it, that's all it is. 1.76 times 10 to the eighth. Hopefully this is making sense. They're not hard problems and you're gonna get you, you're gonna get them, you're gonna get them. They're gonna be easy for you, easy for us and we're gonna take this, we're gonna take it to the top, okay? On a license plate, there will be four letters, A through zero, followed by three numbers, zero through nine, capital number of license plates that can be made if repetition is allowed. I almost believe I've seen that problem before. So you know what? I mean, it's the same thing. You guys could go ahead and check it out. I mean, it could have changed. Like, it's not always gonna be like that. Wait a second. It is a different problem, man. Some people might have gotten freaked out with this bad boy. Because here, it says that we got three letters. But here, we don't have three letters here. See, I knew I was here for a reason. We don't have three letters. We got four letters. We gotta make sure to read carefully. And we're only picking three numbers. So this one is gonna change. We got 26 choices for the letters, repetition allowed, and we're gonna raise it to the fourth power. We're gonna multiply it by 10, because there's 10 numbers, and we're gonna pick three choices, raise it to the third power. So 26 enter, four y over x. 10 enter, three y over x. Hit multiply, and we got ourselves our answer, 4.57 times 10 to the eighth. This is a completely reasonable answer because in the last problem we only had three 26s. Now we have four 26s. Even though we only have one less 10, that 26 increased our total number of outcomes and that's why our answer here is a lot greater. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. Calculate how many possible ways of making groups of three students from a class of 10 students, okay? So here's the deal. We're making groups. Does order matter? Order does not matter. Order does not matter. So we're gonna go ahead and set this problem up. We got ourselves a total of 10 choices and we're gonna go ahead and only pick three of them. So it's 10 minus three factorial. It ultimately ends up being 10 times nine times eight. Okay, let me go ahead and undo that times nine times eight. Or 10 factorial divided by seven factorial. Both cases work. So we go ahead and set this up and we end up with our answer. Notice it's an integer problem. You better hit that yellow show to make sure you got the right answer, 720. And we call it, we call it. Now this one's a real interesting here because this one, I didn't even think that this was a combination problem. I didn't even think it was, but it sure is, it sure is. Why? Because what they're telling us here is we got 12 non-collinear points. That means there are 12 points on a plane, like think of it as a quarter, like a coordinate grid. And we got 12 of them randomly placed on there, okay? Non-collinear means they're not in a straight line, okay? Collinear being straight line, okay? They're not on the same line. So triangles could only be made up when points are, you know, not on the same line. I mean, it's gotta be three different points in space, non-collinear. So when I first saw this problem, I didn't know what the heck I was doing until I actually started thinking about it. When I drew the points, I started thinking to myself, wait a second, I have a total of 12 selections. And a triangle needs three of those points. I'm picking three. It ends up being a combination problem here, okay? And that's what we're gonna end up doing. We got 12 factorial, we got 12 factorial, and we're gonna put 12 minus three factorial. So it ends up being 12 times 11 times 10. Or 12 factorial divided by nine factorial. And we end up with our answer of 
320. Okay? It's interesting. It's an interesting problem here. Okay? Oh, I like this one. I like this one. I like this one. Calculate how many different seven digit phone numbers can be made using digits zero through nine inclusive. Inclusive means that it's gonna include all of the digits from that. All of those digits here, okay? All of these could be included, okay? Zero through nine. But here's the thing, here's the kicker. Repetition is allowed, right? It is allowed. Okay, that is the worst circle I've ever seen in my life. But the first digit cannot be zero. So when we start thinking about this problem, we can't pick zero for the first one. So we don't have 10 choices. We only got nine choices for our first one. We got six different numbers we could pick that now could include zero. So we're gonna go ahead and multiply by 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Or if you think about it, 10 to the sixth power. So that's what this one's gonna be. 10 to the sixth. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit nine multiply. And this is not an integer problem, so we could go ahead and get away with, well, let me go ahead and delete. Get away with 9.00 times 10 to the sixth, all right? So look, these problems are pretty easy. We're gonna get through them, but you know, sometimes we don't think they're easy, but they are super easy here, super easy, all right? So let's go ahead and get it right here, okay? Get it. So we got ourselves how many two-digit numbers can be created from single digit odd numbers. Okay, that's the key one. Single digit odd numbers if repetition can be allowed. Well, first things first, we gotta know what our odd numbers are. So we got one, we got three, we got five, we got seven, we got nine, we got 11, right? Uh-oh, you better not count 11 because that's the key single digit odd numbers here, okay? So really we only got five numbers to choose from. Can it be repeated? It sure can. It is allowed. It's allowed right there. So we're going to go ahead and hit five because we've got five choices. And then we're going to raise it to the second power. Five times five. I don't even need my calculator for that one. It's an integer problem. I don't have to write it correct form. 25. Hey, you know what's funnier than 24? 25. I'm a SpongeBob fan. All right. Don't be hating on me because of that. See ya. Hating on me because that SpongeBob jokey, yeah. <laughs> All right, next problem here. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's get it. Okay, we got a test that has 10 multiple choice questions. Okay, now this one's a little different here. We got five choices each, and then we got 10 other choices that have true or false. Now, I wonder how many choices a true or false question here is. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. It's two. Easy work. Easy clap rap. So let's go ahead and do it. We got five choices for the 10 multiple choice questions, probably A, B, C, D, or E, and we're gonna raise it to 10 power. We're gonna multiply that by two choices for the true or false, and we got 10 of those questions, we're gonna raise it to the 10th power. So this is how many outcomes we got for the test. So it's gonna be five, enter, 10, y over x. Two, enter, 10, y over x, multiply that bad boy. Now look, I'm not gonna, really get into this but some of you might have been able to see that this is even you could actually do some little laws of exponents here some little rules here we could have even just done 10 to the 10th power but you know that's another lesson for another day we got 1.00 times 10 to the 10 but it's really the same thing i mean i don't know if you can see it right there there's a little little pattern going on there yeah buddy okay 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 let's go let's go next prop calculate the number of five digit numbers can be formed from the digits one through nine, that's key here. We're not having 10 choices for numbers. We're only have nine choices, okay? And that's where people could get this wrong. And we're only selecting how many digits? Five. No repetition is allowed. So this order matters. We got nine factorial. Why nine, not 10? Because zero is not included. And then the bottom is gonna be four factorial. Why? Because remember, let's go back to that formula. We got n factorial over n minus r factorial, okay? We got five choices, there you go. Nine factorial, four factorial, divide. And now, since it's an integer problem, you better hit yellow show. We got 151, sorry, 15,120. That's how many different outcomes we got for this, okay? Yeah, I mean, look, math's pretty interesting, but once you know the rules, once you see the possibilities, you can see the combinations and permutations. Pretty easy problems, okay? We got Mr. M right here, pop quiz, five true or false. Uh-oh, those should be easy. Five multiple choice, and they have three choices each. 
calculate the number of possible outcomes for the quiz. So we got five true or false. So we're going to go ahead and hit two because there's two outcomes, two choices for this. For each question, there's two possibilities to the fifth power. Now we're going to multiply by three to the fifth power. That's really all it is. Two, enter, five, y, the x. Now here's the deal. Some of you may be in number sense and some of you might have these memorized. And if you do, well, then it might even be easier to you just to put the numbers that they actually are. Like two to the fifth is 32. Three to the fifth, I don't know I have that memorized, but two to the fifth, I do. But if you don't, I mean, you use the formulas and you just set up the problem and you get your answers. We end up with the correct answer of seven, 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 six. Man, that seems a little bit lucky right there. Triple seven right there. Yeah. But you know what's going to be not lucky? is all our skill and all the hard work we're putting into this so we can make sure we can get, increase our scores do really good and just learn some mathematics you know what i'm saying all right let's take a look at the next problem here 22 members of mass science association met for a meeting oh that's cute if every member shook hands with every other member once calculate the number of handshakes at the meeting now this one is different than every other problem we've seen thus far look two people in the room all right, they shake hands. It doesn't matter who was the first person to initiate the handshake and the second person to receive the handshake. It doesn't matter, okay? So if I say one, two, it's exactly the same outcome as two, one, meaning that if the second person initiated this time, it's still the same handshake. This is a combination question. Why? Because order doesn't matter every single thing else we've seen order has mattered but this one order doesn't matter this is a different formula here we got n factorial over r factorial this is the first time we're going to be using that r factorial but the next part of the denominator we've seen before it's still going to be n minus r factorial okay so in this problem we got ourselves how many members 22 so we got 22 members okay and we're gonna go ahead and do wait a second two people are involved in the handshake so that's two factorial and we're gonna multiply that by 22 minus 2 which is you got it 20 factorial now of course some of you may just be able to do this a little easier you might say hey wait a second 22 over 20 factorial is just really gonna be 22 times 21 and then since 2 factorial is the same as 2 times 1 which is 2 we just cut it in half. I mean, that could work too if you're able to visualize it, if you're able to see it. But at the end of the day, you use the formula n factorial over r factorial times parentheses n minus r factorial. You get your same answer here. So I'm going to go ahead and put 22 factorial. Let me do this again because I got sidetracked here. Then I'm going to put 2 factorial and then I'm going to put 20 factorial. Hit multiply and then hit divide to connect it. We got ourselves an integer. Got to hit that yellow show 231. And that's our first combination question. Go, 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 combo, 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 nation, right? Combination. I don't think I even spell combination because I'm over here spelling comp. Combination. Yeah, you, you get it. You get it. You get it, right? You know what I'm saying? All right, let's do the next one. Dr. Henry gave his students 2020 quiz. Uh, tw that well, apparently, I don't know what a 2020. Well, and I'm thinking 2020. I'm thinking eye vision. I'm thinking eye vision. I'm thinking, well, what can I see with my eye? But I guess here, uh, this 2020 for this little doctor here, this Dr. Phil looking cat. No, it's Dr. Henry, sorry. It's 20 true false and 20 multiple choice questions with three different choices. So let's see how many different outcomes we got. Well, we got two for true and false, and we got 20 of those questions. We're gonna multiply it by three outcomes, three different choices that can happen for these other multiple choice questions. And since we got 20 of them, boom, we hit multiple. Again. If you're able to see it, because I'm going to show you something, this really is the same as 6 to the 20, if you see it, if you see why. I mean, I'm not going to expand it all for you, but I mean, really, that's what it is. So we got 2 to the 20th. Let's go ahead and raise that. We raise that. We got 3 to the 20th. Let's go ahead and raise that. And then we hit multiply to connect them, okay? And let me do that one more time here, because I didn't make sure that I got the right answer. Uh-oh. There you go. Looks like it's 3.66 times 10 to the 15th. Now look, these questions are so easy. Sometimes it's okay to try to put them twice just because like like, like in my case, I think I might have uh, pressed the wrong button. But I ended up with the same answer twice. I did the work twice. And you know what? It's all good because we still got the answer and we got nine points added to our score. Easy work, easy clap. Calculate how many different three-digit numbers. Okay, so we're picking how many. 
We're already picking three. Can be created from a single digit prime numbers if repetitions allowed. This one's good. I like the repetition. But keyword here, single digit prime. Single digit prime. We gotta make our list of prime. What's our first prime number? Well, it ain't one, I'll tell you that. I heard somebody tell me one earlier. I was like, what the heck have you been thinking, bruh? Those are the single digit primes. We only got four of them, okay? We only got four of them. Is repetition allowed? Sure is. So we got four different choices we can make. How many choices we make it? Three. Four times four times four, or four to the third. Some of you may already know that because of number sense. That's 3064. And we call it. I didn't even use my calculator for this one. It's good to go ahead and know how to do math. You know how to do math. These calculators problems make sense and they're reasonable. Reasonable answers. Calculate the total number of five person committees that can be formed from 10 people. Look, this is a problem where order doesn't matter. Again, you're making groups. It doesn't matter who's in the committee. It's just, you know, just, you know, now, now if, if they had different jobs, order matters here. Order matters, but we don't. We don't have different jobs. So in this case, it's going to be 10 factorial because we've got 10 people. And then we got 5 factorial because 10 minus 5 is 5. So, or, or 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6. Whatever works for you. Whatever floats your boat. You know what I'm saying? So we got 10 factorial, 5 factorial. We hit the Vi. It's an integer problem. Better make sure you do it right. We got 30,000. 200 and is it 40? Is it 40 from that? Not mistaken, 240. Okay. Easy work. So we got Miss Mario here. First quiz to her class. 20 true or false questions. That one's kind of easy compared to what we've been seeing already, you know what I'm saying? So we only got two answer choices for each question. And so uh, we got 20 of them. That's it. Two to the 20th. Two to the 20th. And we call it day. It's not an integer problem. 1.05 times 10 to the 6. Some of you might have wanted to write it in standard notation because it's not that hard to write this one in standard notation. Whatever works for you. Oh, I like this. I like this. We got 15 teams at a meet. And hopefully this is going to be coming to us pretty soon because I, we, we got we to gotta work as that team. We're going to work as a team. Anyways, calculate how many different ways teams could place 1 through 15 at the meet. Assume there are no ties. That means there's nobody going to be winning the same place. Okay, there's no... And there can't be any repetitions. So order does matter. So in this problem, we're picking all 15. So uh, really... You know, this this problem is kind of interesting because we're picking all 15. So we're going to end up with 15 factorial over 0 factorial, right? Why 0? Why 0 factorial? Well, because, um, you know, we're picking all 15. 15 minus 15 is 0 factorial. Now, see, see what ends up happening here is that this problem ends up canceling immediately when you see that zero factorial it's not gonna work it's not gonna work it's already canceling this stuff out like this this doesn't make sense you know it doesn't make sense because you know you know order matters order matters this is a type of situation where we just hit 15 factorial all right that's really what it is we don't have to cancel out anything that's zero because 15 minus 15 that's zero. automatically should tell you that this is just a 15 factorial question, okay? That's it. That's it. That's it. So we got ourselves 1.31 times 10 to the 12. Again, when we do 15 minus 15, I mean, it cancels. Like, we can't do that. We can't do zero fact. It's not going to work. And that's the key in your mind. That's the key that you know what this isn't this isn't gonna work here you know what i'm saying like this isn't gonna work so we just gotta hit 15 factorial i mean there's little things that once you start putting the math in for them like you're gonna start realizing wait a second here we don't need to be doing all this nonsense we already got it we got that work putting in because we're selecting all 15 you know we don't have that zero so you know 15 factorial that's it we call it a day all right circuit combination hawk we have a total of 60 numbers on it combination has three unique numbers unique being are they going to repeat? No, they aren't because they're unique. Unique means individualized. We don't want that same old, same old. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Delgado here, we don't like that same old, same old stuff. We don't need none of that. We want that uniqueness. I, don't know. I like that unique stuff. Okay. Calculate the number of different combinations for this lock. There must be an order. So in this problem, we got to go ahead and do 60 factorial over 57 factorial. Or if you want to think of it this way, 60 times 59 
times 58. It is indeed an integer problem. So we're gonna go ahead and hit yellow show. And I got myself 205,320. So let me go ahead and get this again. 205,000, 205,000. Right, right, okay, they're gonna do undo that. 205,000, what is that again? 320. Easy clap, easy work, easy work. Okay, 50 people are the committee for a betterment of math education. Of oh, wait a second, they gave us jobs. This, this is a committee with jobs. Wow, okay, okay. A person can own any office. How many possible ways can these positions be filled? So, this is a problem where order does matter okay so we got 50 people we're choosing how many one two three four and, and you know what? i like that because that means that you can't be repeating you can't have the same person feel opposite you can't have a president and a vice president and a secretary and treasurer all be me that'd be pretty cool i mean but then i mean i'm probably the only one there working you know what i'm saying so really we got 50 people so it's gonna be 50 factorial 50 minus 4, 46 factorial. Or if you want, think of it 50 times 49 times 48 times 47. Look, the more and more we do these types of problems, you're going to have to do what's best for you. Some of you could think about it. Some of you like using the formulas. I don't really care what you do, but we just got to make sure we can get them right. They are not difficult problems. You're already seeing, though, a lot of times we go ahead and skip these problems because they look intimidating. It's a problem 50. It's a problem 59, I mean. It's a problem 60. It's a problem 71, 72. And we feel intimidated. But you don't need to feel intimidated. They're easy. It's easy claps. Easy work. Nine runners in a race. How many ways can they come in first, second, third? Ooh, order matters here. So we got nine choices. And we're going to go ahead and select how many of them? three of them so it's going to be nine minus three which is six factorial or nine times eight times seven so we really got 72 times seven where did i get 72 from well i could do math it's nine times eight and we end up with our answer of 504 and we call it miss mandy gave a test 15 questions five different answer choices 15 true or false so five different answer choices 15 two answer choices 15 Again, I'm going to throw this out there. Some of y'all can see it. This is really just 10 to the 15th power, man. That's a lot of zeros. And if you see that face of 10, well, that answer should look kind of familiar here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, some of y'all could do these problems even faster than me. As long as I present the information, you probably can grasp it and see these connections right here. All right, let's see that next one. How many different three-digit numbers can be created from single-digit prime numbers if repetition is not allowed? All right, so what are our single-digit prime numbers again? Oh, okay, okay. I, I'm glad I heard it. I'm glad I heard it from you. I hope you were talking because I'm hearing voices. I hope they're yours. <laughs> well, repetition is not allowed. So this one, we're going to have effect. It's not going to be just raised to a power. So we got... Four different numbers, we're choosing three of them. Four factorial, four minus three, one factorial, okay? So technically one factorial is, wait a second here. Huh, one factorial is just one. Do, do I need to, maybe you figured it out. I mean, maybe four times three times two is the same as four times three times two times one here. Maybe they're the same, I wonder why. Well, you better, you better know why. We're multiplying by one and does that change the idea? Does that change the number at all? Identity property of multiplication, ladies and gentlemen. When you multiply by one, you get the same exact number. Four times three times two, 24, 24. And that's a beautiful SpongeBob bit. Look, if I had my screencast and all that stuff done, I should have busted that out, man. I have some different things here. I got a lot of different gifts. I should have put that 24, 20. Wait, what's funny? 20, 25. All right. Number 72. Committee made up of one person from each of the 50 states. Ooh, 50 people, 50 states. Oh, that's good. If each person shakes hand with all the other committee members, how many handshakes will there be in all? Okay, so this is a problem where order doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who gets selected. It doesn't matter if the person from Texas and California gets selected. Texas first, California. Or California first and then Texas. 
So this is the problem where you got n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial, okay? That's this problem. So we go ahead and set it up. We got 50 factorial over 2 factorial because there's two people in a handshake. I mean, if, if you got some... Well, I've seen some crazy handshakes that have a lot more than two people. Like, I've seen some handshakes that do some crazy stuff. But we, we ain't talking about that crazy nonsense right here. We're talking about normal handshakes, okay? Next time they write this problem, you gotta be normal handshakes, okay? Normal handshakes. So how many total handshakes are we gonna get? Well, we got... Look, look, some of you might even want to rewrite this. I mean, it's easier. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's easier per se. But for me, it would have been just easier to do 50 times 49 divided by 2. And it's really just 25 times 49. 49 of 49ers, you know it. Woo! <laughs> I'm just excited. I'm an excited guy with that 49ers, man. Those 49ers are on point. And we end up, wait a second. It is your problem. You better not just write 1.23 times 10 to the third. You do that, you got yourself uh, one little pickle coming in. It's 1,225. 25. All right, all right. We got one more problem. I hope you've been practicing a lot of this combination permutation stuff because at the end of the day, we got to make sure we got what it takes to win. Yeah, boy or girl, whoever you are. You know what? I don't. I got nothing against gender. I got none of that. But you know what I do got? I got winners on my team, and hopefully you're going to be that one of those winners. You know what I'm saying? You want it, you get it. Mrs. Tampa wants to make a group of five students from her class of 20. How many ways is this possible? Order doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you pick first second third fourth or fifth you're in the group you're ready to go so we got 20 factorial over five people in the group factorial times 15 factorial that's the n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial that's the combination formula right here so we go ahead and do do it and we get to it you know what i'm saying 20 factorial then we got ourselves 2 factorial, or you could just divide by 2 right there. But we're making sure to multiply by the 15 factorial first, right? And then hit divide, and we got ourselves, it's not an integer problem, so we could write it either way. 9.30 times 10 to the 5th. Or if you want to be a rebel, you want to be one of those people who does what they want with that standard form. You want to write in standard form. We've got 9.30, 0, 0, 0, 0. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we had some good times. We got some good problems here. We got these combinations, permutations going, and hopefully we got ourselves some math coming in. Now, this is probably something you've never really seen before, but it's not that hard, ladies and gentlemen, and that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to help you out. Remember, we're doing calculator questions. I'm gonna go all the way back to the top. Combinations and permutations here. That's what we're working with, combinations, permutations here. And hopefully, you got to learn something. We got to learn a little something. We got to spend some time. Hope you have a great Thanksgiving, great turkey time. If you have any fixings left over, you know me. You know me, I'm down to eat. But I hope you have yourself a great day, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, man, we had a good time today. We had a good time on this one. I don't know about you, but, man, I'm hungry. <laughs>